Alright everybody, the last screencast for the World War II unit is the end of the war. Our learning outcomes for this last screencast are students should be able to describe German, the Germans' final solution. Uh, second and third and number four, understand what critics said about the trials at Nuremberg. Number three, justify the decision to drop the atomic bomb. And number four, describe the influence the U.S. had on Japan after World War II. The Holocaust, the uh, final solution. Genocide, very basically, which you should remember from world history, is the systematic killing of a population. Uh, the gypsies were part of this. They believed uh, The Germans believed that they were inferior. Freemasons were seen as supporters of the Jewish conspiracy. Jehovah's Witnesses uh, were persecuted for refusing to salute Hitler, refusing the army. And homosexuals, mentally deficient or mentally ill, disabled and terminally ill patients were also targets. So if you had a limp, more than likely you'd be uh, deemed unfit for labor and sent either to the gas chamber or sent to, if you were earlier in the war, uh, the execution line. This began in Poland with the Nazi SS and lasts throughout the war. Uh, it starts with mass graves, but the problems with mass graves is that it leaves evidence, and also it is tough psychologically on the people that are doing the shooting. Uh, it evolves into the gas chambers and then into the crematoriums. Uh, and actually, this is not even Hitler's idea. It is, uh, it's Himmler's idea. So the liberation of the death camps, we are moving east through Germany, and a lot, of the, a lot of people ask, we should have been able to do more, we should have done more earlier. The problem is, is we see all of the propaganda from World War I, is we think that what we're hearing by the, for World War II, especially with these putting people in camps and what's happening, is that it's, again, that same style of propaganda of throwing the babies up on, in the air and catching them on the ends of bayonets. So, uh, as we're moving east through Germany, we find 1,000 uh, 1, starving prisoners at Majdanek, which I think I might have mispronounced that. Uh, this, con this camp right here had the, the largest crematorium. Uh, one of the soldiers dubbed, or said that it is not a concentration camp, it is a gigantic murder plant. Uh, and you can kind of see, uh, if you've seen Band of Brothers with the liberation of the camp uh, clip there, if you looked at it on ETSD, you can see the emotion that, that comes out from these people that are basically being saved by the Allied troops. The Yalta Conference, February 1945, you have Roosevelt, Churchill, and you have Stalin. With the end of the war kind of being imminent, according to these guys, the idea when they get together here at Yalta is to decide what's going to happen with Germany after the war. Stalin wants Germany to be divided into military zones. Uh, with this, if, the, if Roosevelt and Churchill agree to this, Stalin would then agree to join the fight against the Japanese. Also, in agreeing to dividing, military, uh, dividing Germany into military zones, Stalin would also agree to take part in the upcoming United Nations Conference. The end of the war in Europe, after the Battle of the Bulge, Hitler basically knows he and the Third Reich are basically done. Uh, he's going to commit suicide. He still is going to blame the Jews for starting the war, which is absolutely crazy to me. Uh, he's going to tell his uh, top associates to burn the body, to leave no evidence, and virtually leaving the Third Reich leaderless. And they're going to surrender. The strangest part about this, there's a, a film called Downfall. It's all in German. Uh, you, it, it chronicles the last bit of time for the Third Reich. But the most kind of powerful part for me was the people that were so conditioned by Hitler that they didn't want to live in a world without him. So when they find out that he is dead, that they end up wanting to kill themselves as well. Once the Third Reich surrenders in May uh, 1945, it is going to be known as VE Day or Victory in Europe Day. Unfortunately for FDR, he was elected to his fourth term, uh, which really was aided by the successes of D-Day. Uh, he never sees the end of this war. He has a stroke and dies uh, as he's taking a family portrait in Georgia. Who's going to take over for him? Harry Truman. So this is one of my favorite political cartoons. You have the British, you have the Americans, and also the Soviets from each side coming and crushing or squeezing Hitler and the Third Reich out of Europe. Uh, here's another German surrenders, uh, kind of very similar to the to the kissing on, on Victor in Japan Day. You see this prior to that. This is like the original one, if you want to call it that. Uh, you, here's these guys. You can see FDR does not look really good at all in this picture. He has aged significantly since taking office in 1932. You see Churchill there on the left-hand side and Stalin 
on the right-hand side. Now, the Nuremberg Trials. 24 Nazi leaders are put on trial for crimes against humanity, crimes against peace, and also war crimes. Half of these guys are sentenced to death. The lesser trials, the kind of the foot soldiers, if you want to call them that, about 200 of them were guilty of war crimes. And every now and then, uh, over the last really 1950s and 60s, you'll hear of people being put on trial or finally evidence coming out about certain Nazi people that were serving under uh, in Nazi Germany under the Third Reich that are being convicted of war crimes are in their 80s or 90s now, uh, just happened recently. Also is going to set the precedent at the Nuremberg Trials that just following orders is not an acceptable response, that your superiors were told you to do this, so you did this. So killing all these men, women, and children and elderly people, you were just following orders, is not a good excuse. Uh, you should know better. You should take into your into personal beliefs into if it's right or wrong at this point, which, remember this, is going to come up again on the flip side with the United States, uh, not too much uh, longer after this. So the defendants at Nuremberg, you can see these guys right here. You see the MPs behind them. And again, they're going to be all sentenced to death, these major offenders. Now, dropping of the bomb. The Office of Scientific Research and Development is going to bring science to the war. The Manhattan Project, brought on by uh, Oppenheimer, is the best-kept secret of the war. Uh, Harry Truman didn't even know about this while he was vice president. He doesn't know until he takes over for FDR when he dies. The bomb itself, it is tested in July 1945 in New Mexico. It is deemed a success. When Truman meets with the other Allied leaders at Potsdam, he doesn't really tell them what he's got going on. Truman warns Japan of prompt and utter destruction if they don't surrender, but doesn't tell them, hey, we have this huge weapon that's going to do massive amounts of destruction to you if you do not give up. Uh, prompt and utter destruction, what does that mean? It's very vague. So, of course, they don't give up. Now, you see the big three here. Notice that's not Churchill. Okay, It's not Churchill on the, on the left-hand side anymore. Stalin is the only leader that sees the beginning of the war through the end of the war. Uh, Clement Attlee is going to take over for Churchill. Uh, the Churchill's party loses the general election, so Clement Attlee is now going to be the new prime minister of England who is going to see through the end of the war for the British. Now the bomb itself, when it drops. Enola Gay drops a little boy over Hiroshima, August 6th, 1945. You can see these guys here. There's the Enola Gay in the background. Surprisingly, there's no Japanese surrender. Three days later, August 9th, Fat Man gets dropped on Nagasaki. Fat Man, some people will speculate that it was named after Churchill, being a little bit more round than the other guys, but you can make that up, uh, opinion for yourself. About 200,000 people die with the dropping of the bombs here. This is Hiroshima before. This is what it looks like after. Okay? Complete devastation. Nagasaki before, the bomb, Nagasaki after. Again, complete and utter destruction. You can see ground zero there in the bottom picture. This is the burns caused from the extreme heat from the uh, bomb going off. You can see the, the lines on, on this woman's shoulder and arm here from her kimono that she had uh, on at the time. This is what is left on the ground from the explosion. I, again, complete and utter destruction. If you remember the tsunami that hit a few years ago, it looked very similar to this. Here's another burned body. You can see the very severe burns from the heat uh, from these weapons. Now the surrender. You can see there on the left-hand side, you have Douglas MacArthur. August 14th is declared victory in Japan Day. It is technically August 15th in Japan at this point, the international dateline. Hirohito says he cannot bear to see my innocent people suffer any longer because a lot of those people that died with the dropping of both bombs were civilians. September 2nd, there is the formal surrender on board the USS Missouri, also known as the Mighty Mo, which is kind of an in-your-face of the Japanese because it was one of those ships that was bombed at Pearl Harbor, forcing them to sign their surrender on the Missouri. Uh, here's a picture. Uh, you can see uh, MacArthur standing there and then the signing of the uh, complete and utter surrender. Here's a, a picture of the newspaper that was printed that day. This is the Times-Herald. Japan gives up, except allied terms. 
Here's another one, Japs quit. Again, Japs being acceptable to use at this point. And then the famous picture kissing on VJ Day right here in Times Square. The al uh, allied, Allies have won, the war is over, and really now for sure the war is over completely. Now we don't leave. Well, uh, we don't leave Japan right immediately following. We have a seven-year occupation introducing a free market system, helping them build their economy, and instituting a new constitution uh, being dubbed the MacArthur Constitution. He is going to be the one living there, kind of overseeing this whole thing happen. So post-World War II, we're, we'll get into this when we start talking about the Cold War. The Marshall Plan from 1948 is to rebuild the European economies, which is basically setting forth an anti-communist plan uh, anti and against anything against poverty, hunger, and desperation, and chaos. And really what this is going to be adapted to, is so it's not just simply an anti-communist measure. Uh, 16 countries take over $13 billion in aid. Unfortunately, just like most other things, we don't entirely get paid back. So you should be able to describe the Germans' final solution, and that is moving from mass graves to uh, gas chambers and crematoriums. Understand what critics said about the trials at Nuremberg. Critics are basically saying that we don't do enough, that there is not enough that's going to happen there. Not, it's not harsh enough. Also, the biggest thing is uh, just following orders is not sufficient and not a sufficient answer. Number three, the decision to drop the bomb, you're going to cost uh, over one million allied lives or uh, end the war within a few days. They choose to end the war within a few days. And number four, describe the influence the U.S. had on Japan. Uh, we completely redo their constitution. We occupy them and we kind of redo their entire economy and market system. So. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. This was the last screencast for World War II. Thank you for watching. I'm out.